So today, instead of talking about guitar things, I'm going to talk a little bit about something musical, just to get something off my chest, because I just discovered I have nearly a thousand subscribers. And uh, who knows, this might create a really interesting discussion. I've been thinking a lot lately about listening to music. For quite a while, uh, I worked a job where I was on the road so much that all my music listening was in the car, and that's great. Uh, in fact, the best thing Maybe the only good thing about some of the long drives I had to take in that job were the fact that I could uh, listen to like long pieces of music in their entirety. I, to give you an example, uh, one that I listened to a couple times from beginning to end because I was on long drives is an amazing work called Blood on the Fields by Wynton Marsalis, which comes on three huge, I mean, three CDs that are almost full of music. It's really long. It's an amazing piece of music to listen to. And it's a similar to Wagner, who I kind of like as well. Um, you have to listen all the way through to really get it. But still, I'm, I'm on the road driving. And, and the one thing about listening digitally to music is that it becomes a, a commodity uh, or something that you consume. Um, now, uh, there's been a huge resurgence in the interest in vinyl and a lot of that is nostalgia. You know, somebody that gets a really cheap record player that buys uh, some records uh, and they just want to listen to it that way to do something that it, uh, reminds them of a, of a time maybe even before they were born. In fact, I was in a record store not too long ago. I can't believe I said that. There's record stores again. I was in a record store and almost everybody in the store was probably born after the time when uh, record stores stopped selling vinyl records for the first time. Of course, most of those record stores are gone now, uh, so it's really nice to see them back. So it's not really nostalgia for them. It's nostalgia for something that they never experienced. Um, records don't sound better than CDs. Uh, they don't, uh, by any objective measure. What do I mean by that? Wow and Flutter. You, they're, they're virtually non-existent on a CD, but they're present on a record. Surface noise. Uh, scratches and pops. Um, the fact of the matter is that the more you play a record, uh, the more it might wear down those grooves. I found some very old records in my collection because I kept almost all my records. And uh, some of them are just unplayable because they were played so many times or on bad equipment. Uh, a CD, when you play it a thousand times, it sounds the same as it did the first time. Um, however, we don't always do things because they sound better. I will give you, uh, and I don't know, how, uh, best way to explain this for my musician friends who play guitar is this. When uh, in the 1960s, Fender and some other amp makers decided to make less expensive amps by making them solid state, uh, they were a real dud. They were making amps that were tube amps at the time, and solid state amps sounded better by every objective measurement. If you used scopes and everything like that to measure how they sounded, they sounded better. However, nobody wants to play those. Nowadays, we have something called digital modeling that a lot of my viewers know about because I talk a lot about Helix on here. Uh, that's different because that's a whole n next generation. Uh, but even then, uh, when you walk into a store and, and, and a guitar sits down and he decides between a solid state amp that's sitting there and a tube amp, he's going to generally like the tube amp. And he likes the tube amp because it technically sounds worse. I remember years ago, there was a guy who created a guitar pickup uh, and he put it in a Les Paul guitar that was based on fiber optic technology and had a clean, clear sound that he thought was beautiful. And if you wanted to make it sound bad, that was your business. But it didn't really, it, it sounded so pristine that when you plugged it into a regular amplifier, it sounded terrible. You're probably thinking, I've never heard of that. There's a reason for that. Didn't catch on. So if CDs sound objectively better than records, by a by objective measurements, why is it that I would want to give this up? So this here is Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Symphonies Volume 6 by the Academy of Ancient Music, uh, Christopher Hogwood conducting. And when I open up this case and bring out this little guy, this is a, a, a 20, I'm sorry, 39-year-old compact disc. These, uh, 
I think it's actually newer than that, but it was first issued in 1983 is when it was recorded. And it was probably not until the mid to late 80s that, uh, in fact, it was 1988. So it was well over 30 years ago that it came out on C, whoops, it came out on CD. It is an astoundingly beautiful performance of several of Mozart's symphonies, and I absolutely adore it. And I have it on CD, and there's absolutely nothing magical about opening this up and listening to it. If you just want background music, background noise, that's fine. Play a CD, play Spotify, whatever. Now I'm in a place where my job sits me at this desk preparing sermons and making plans and sending emails and doing research and things like that. And I find myself doing something I haven't done in years, maybe decades, is I, as I'm spending time here, um, I'm listening to music. Um, on speakers, you can't see them, but I have a pair of basically monitor style speakers right on my desk at the perfect place for me to hear stereo right here where I work. And so here's that same exact, remember this guy? Here it is, but this is on record. Now the first thing you'll notice is that it is just bigger. The art is bigger. The booklet that it comes with, which is so extensive that I have never read it all but will one day, is bigger. And in this particular case, they took great care. This is, this is almost 40 years ago, folks. These new fangled pressings are not new. They took great care with, with, with the jacket that has this sort of plastic glassine um, uh, protector for the record. They took great care. This is actually my brother John's record. He doesn't have a turntable. He gave me, rec he gave me these records uh, a long time ago. I don't know if they're mine to keep, so I'm taking care of them in case he ever wants them back. Uh, but in this particular case, it's four records of Mozart's greatest symphonies, uh, including, uh, I'm gonna listen today, in fact, to number 40 and 41. The experience of getting out that record, not being able to pause it as I go, but having to stop what I'm doing, put it on the turntable, which is right over here, you can't see it, and just listen makes you part of the process of the music. Instead of just being somebody who's consuming this thing that's being thrown out you, you are um, you're participating. You have to clean the record. You have to brush the stylus. You have to maintain things. You don't just push a button and say, hey, Spotify, uh, play Lizzo or whatever. I mean, there's nothing wrong with all that. And sometimes I suppose music can be something that is just consumed. But when I want to listen, even though I'm doing other things, I'm still sitting right next to these speakers, I want to stop. And that's the wonderful thing. All you people that are uh, running out to buy records, like everybody, I think, uh, what I just heard that John Coltrane, which I, John Coltrane recently got his first platinum record for this thing that came out uh, almost 60 years ago. This is actually my copy. It is a Father's Day gift from my son. It is pressed on blue vinyl. I already have it on CD. In fact, I have it on SAC, Super Audio CD, uh, which is probably the best way to listen to music through speakers uh, on the planet, that and Blu-ray. Um, but this guy here is uh, gonna be spun up a little bit later today, and I'm gonna stop what I'm doing and surround myself with the music. I'm actually not gonna stop because I can work while I listen to music. But it's not like I'm putting in a crappy set of earbuds or something like that. I'm actually participating. And, and I got a big piece of art. So yeah, all that to say, you should you wasted your time if you watched, watched this whole thing. Because here's all you need to know. Records don't sound better than CDs. CDs objectively sound better. But maybe LP records are a better way to actually listen to music and enjoy it. So yeah, go buy that record. Don't go buy 12 of them, go buy one, open it up, smell it, take it out, clean it, listen to it. Just stop what you're doing, listen to music. Uh, a musician that I respect uh, said something uh, a few years ago that I thought was interesting. He said, music should never be something that's free. Music is a sacrament. I like that. And I feel like with these, I get into sacrament territory instead of just Oh, that's just background noise. Anyway, go listen to some music uh, and stop watching this.